Welcome to the Successful Woman Podcast, where we interview inspiring women from around the globe, each week taking you to the next level of your success. And welcome to the Successful Woman Podcast, where we have another incredible woman to speak with you today. Today, we have Joanne Brooks from Navigate Biz joining us. Welcome to the show, Joe. Oh, thank you, Joanne. Look, it's a bit, we're a little bit of a duplicate here, aren't we? We're <laughs> both Joes, but it's it's amazing and it's always a delight to talk to you. So thank you. Well, for those of you in the audience that haven't had the pleasure of meeting Joanne before, I just want to give you a little bit of context to this amazing woman's background. So Jo is CEO and founder of Navigate Biz, but prior to that, she has had 15 companies across 10 different industries, and we're talking about businesses of all different sizes and scale, including one that was a 30 million turnover in 24 months. So this woman has had incredible experience in business, but she's very passionate absolutely passionate about supporting women and supporting women in business as well which is why we're having you on the show today yes. so joe thank you so much for everything that yeah. you do up front i know i've had the great pleasure to be connected with you in a few circles now yeah. um, and i can think of no one better to talk to us today about how to unlock the hidden value in your business that's a bit compelling isn't it I, you know i love that and um, no i appreciate that it's it's something that uh, has resonated with me for a long time, and uh, you know, as many businesses, we have to refine the message and where we where we position our businesses, and you know, that's something that's an ongoing piece. I think for any business owner, but uh, yeah, no, I'm deeply passionate about that one. So before we get into business and unlocking value mm -hmm. in your business, I have to ask you this: success. What does it mean to you? Yeah, that's such a good question. And, you know, I often ask that of my mentees. So let's let's hope that I can nail this one for you. <laughs> and I think it's it's individual. Like the answer is depends. It's, it's individual to the person, right? And so for me, having owned, um, owned many businesses, successfully and not, and I think that's a really good thing for me to point out because I've learned a lot about that. So for su success to me, when I visualise that, I can see... Um, over a million women, like this is going to be a big arena, a million women, right, that I've impacted. And so this is this is what success means for me. And that amongst that crowd are at least a 1,000 women that I've been able to support financially to help them build and grow their business. And so when I think about that, I get goosebumps. I've got them now. Um, I can feel it. I can hear it. I can taste it. And so what I know, like that's a huge picture, but I know when those things happen, all the things that I want for my family, for my lifestyle, for what it means to my customers are there. That means I've arrived. Amazing. Well, when you arrive at the arena, I want an invite because yes. I want to be in that arena with you yes. and the rest of the amazing ladies too. So absolutely. Yes. Okay, I'll hold you to that. <laughs> no problem. But, but so, Joe, what I love about you is your real authentic honesty around what went well and what didn't go well in your business career and you know I know many entrepreneurs they want to be entrepreneurs and it all sounds great and everybody wants the good shiny stuff but nobody's really prepared to go through the the tough stuff and to to explain the difficult stuff that you, that you need to learn which is one of the reasons why we have this podcast is women like you being able to share your expertise mm. so Everybody's fascinated with starting a business and growing a business, but yep. let's talk about the end game. And I know that you're very um, focused on goals and having, you know, big purpose and why around your business, but let's talk about exiting a business yeah. and why is it important to have an exit strategy and, and when do you need one? Well, you need one now is the answer. And that, so if, if, if the listeners are listening to this, they go, oh, well, I'm in business now or I'm thinking about starting a business. The answer is now. And, and so why do I say that? Why do I believe in that? It's, a, it's very much like having a goal and not putting a plan, putting a plan together and how you're going to get there. It's just a dream. It's just a pipe dream. You're not aiming for anything. But, you know, when you start something like a business, this is your wealth creation tool it's the fuel for your lifestyle that's how I see it and so you want to know like the the question you gave asked me first what does success look like for you success might be that that business owner is able to um, sell his business franchise it move it on 
but that enables them to achieve a certain lifestyle and those sort of things. So when you're clear about why you start a business and what the exit is, which is like years apart, it actually shapes how you're going to run that business and what you're going to do and implement in that business. Um, as you said, I've been involved in a number of industries and one of them, uh, I've got a firsthand um, eyeball of that in that I used to write commercial finance and I would have people come to me who were looking to buy a business. I'd see the financials of the current owner and I could see clearly they hadn't prepared their business to sell it and potentially they weren't selling it for the optimum price. So we all work incredibly hard. We put a lot of heart and soul in our businesses. And so I want those business owners to actually get reap the rewards of that. So let's put a plan in place. And yet it will shift and change and it might do a, a U-turn here or a left turn there. That's cool. But have a broad idea of where you want to take the business so that as you grow, scale if you wish to, as you develop that business, you are clear about where you're heading because it will change how you run your business. And I imagine that in the changing of how you run your business, it's going to bring a lot of value to the current business, right? So, so having that clear end goal is also going to have you improve your efficiencies and your systems and, you know, even your, your net cost of, of certain certain things. So, so that process is really an ongoing process, isn't it? So it's really a business discipline that you're, that you're sharing, yeah? Yeah, uh, and I like to give it the word business rituals. You know, we all hear, hear about habits. We all hear about rhythms and they're super important. So if I can just quickly duck dive into that habit is something you do by brushing your teeth you don't put a lot of mind to it yeah so a lot of people talk about habits and I want to shift that thinking rhythms are things you need to do to, to look at the metrics of your business but let's talk about uh, rituals because that for me is not a religious connotation but it's definitely with presence with awareness so that you are actually giving the attention to that regular activity that you're doing so that you can make well-informed decisions as to where you need to move and shift your business and what decisions you need to make about your business. So that's incredibly important. Um, it also, and you mentioned about systems and those sort of things, you know, everything you do in your business, the end game is you want the best price, you want somebody to be able to pick it up and run it. So we know we've got lots of amazing women who start their business with a wonderful purpose and goals and all those sort of things. But you don't want your business to be reliant on you for the entire lifetime at that business. You want to put people in place. You want to put systems and processes in place so that when you're ready to sell, sell it, the purchaser can go, oh, yeah, I can do that. I don't need Joanne or Joanna to still be here to run it because that will impact the sale price of your business. Yeah, so we've got all these people that are busy in survival with their business. They're working really hard. And then they get to the finish line only to realise that they're not going to realise what they want in their business because they didn't set up the things they needed to in the business from, from the get-go. And I know the more mature a business becomes, often the more difficult it is to go back. It's like yeah. building a building. If you don't have the foundations right from the beginning, the whole thing's wonky and likely to fall over, right? So is that much the same from your experience in business? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, as we've already been talking about, you know, we know business is hard and there's we wear lots of hats when we first start a business. And, I, and I'm thinking, I'm wondering if some of the listeners are going, oh, wow, this sounds really complicated. And I've got it, you know, I'm going to get distracted with all this exit strategy stuff. You know, the really lovely thing is if we bring in technology into a business, it can take some of those hats off you. It can actually release time for you and let you work on the business, generate more income, better profits. But those systems are the things that are going to give you the return in the long term when you go to exit the business and sell it. So if we just put in this rhythm, this ritual of always looking about how can I do things better can I use technology? Do I need to outsource it? And there's some really great ways of how you can put all that in place, which is what I'm here for. But it actually releases the pressure, which I think is a great thing. It may be a little bit unexpected. Absolutely. And I mean, now more than ever, we're at a really interesting time with AI and automation. I mean, I have, I've seen podcasts that are now podcasts that are AI generated podcasts. Well, that sound like the people that deliver the podcast, but it's not the podcast deliverer. 
So we're going to get into all sorts of interesting things with technology and how it's going to be applied. Mm. But it's also where do you apply it and why are you apply it, which I think is is the part that you're really really talking about. But yeah. so let's let's set the context. We've got lots of really pe- people that are busy in the survival mode of just the day to day of business. Mm. Um, a lot of particularly female entrepreneurs find it difficult to ha- find time to work on the business because when they're not in the business, they're looking after family and kids and all sorts of other things. But ultimately speaking, there's two things. There's a stage before you think about exit, which most people want to master, and that's the growth stage. So Mm. it would be helpful if you could just explain what's the difference between a growth plan and an exit strategy? Yeah, really good question. One becomes before the other. Growth is first. Now, now to the level of growth, everybody's going to be different, right? But growth... Growth can be escalated or multiplied if you put efficient systems in place. And I know you've heard me say this term often, Joanna, which is high tech, high touch. And that's really important for me. I I will leverage technology as much as I possibly can, provided it gives me efficiency of my effort, my cost and my time, because that allows me personally to spend more time with my clients and give them a better service and better experience. So growth strategies are looking at all the options of how you can escalate your business, whether it's diversity of income streams, so product or offer, it's improvement of um, of, um, ways you do business, it's having a circle of people around you that can support and guide, hey, we've got the successful woman, that's awesome, that's an amazing platform that supports people. But all those layers of things, you know, collaboration, so many ways you can grow a business. Your exit strategy is actually receiving the reward for the effort. And so it's having the business sale ready. If that's, if that's, let's say, let's say it is a sale that you're looking for, you have to work towards Joanne's the CEO of Navigate. Joanne cannot be the sole income producer for Navigate when I go to sell that because I've got nothing to sell other than a bit of my IP, which you're not going to get the value for. So growth strategies are putting in all those layers that enable you to take it to where you need to be and the laser answer said systems, processes, agreements, contracts in place. The exit strategy is making all that hard work give you the return on investment. And I suppose the exit strategy is going to be business dependent, it's going to be market dependent. Uh, You know, it's very different if you're looking for your strategy to be an IPO listing to a private sale. Uh, So there's so many different things to, to consider in that. And, you know, there's also, I guess, the fundamental thing is when you're growing, you're often reinvesting, you know, the money back into the business, which means that you may not necessarily be showing the profits, but you're reinvesting into the business. When you're selling the business, the question is, well, how are they going to determine the value? Is it on, is it on my loan book size? Is it on my revenue? And how, how is the sale going to be determined? Because it's really preparing the business to maximize the results relative to how they're going to assess you, right? Exactly, exactly. So, you know, and I'm not a business broker expert, but, and I would recommend you go and ask some people and say, look, if I was to exit my business at this point, what are you looking for in a business to maximize the return? Now, there's there's lots of information out there. There's certain industries that when, yeah, there's there's these formulas that they, they pull together, like you just spoke about size of loan books for a, a broker business, et cetera. And it could be a multiplier of your net profit, those sort of things. But I can assure you when you have a business and you can demonstrate that when Sally Jones comes along to buy Navigate, for example, and I can say, here are all how we do everything. Here's all the contracts with customers. Here's the lease agreements that are going to extend past the sale. Here's all the future work that's coming in because we have contracts in place. And here's the history of the profitability of the business. And you can see the consistent growth. All that adds to the value that you're offering to the Sally who's going to buy your business. And by the way, Sally, you don't need Joanne to put this in place because we've already put the systems in place that it's not reliant on me. My IP has come out of my head into the systems. But if you do this, methodically as you are building the business you the last thing you want is to go year out and you go oh my my gosh I've got to do all these things and so your history won't show it because when people look at your figures they want to look at a three-year history and a lot of people think oh the year before is sufficient it's actually not 
because they want to look at a three-year story of what the finance should show you. And I mean, the truth is, Joe, it could be external factors as to why you need to sell the business for a multiplicity of reasons, right? So you just don't want to be one of those business owners that gets caught out and then finds that you've worked for 10, 15 years and you're not able to maximise the value. Exactly. And yeah, one of your exit strategies could be going down the franchising road. And so franchising, if you have, if you think about it, it is virtually a business in a box. It's got all the systems, the marketing, everything. And so if you want to go down that path, like I was looking at some metrics the other day, there's 94,500 franchises in Australia today. It's a very crowded space. There's 1,300 franchising groups. So you've got to make sure that the model you have is worth somebody paying X amount of dollars to buy, you know, your, your little business in a box. And so it's going to expect all these things to be done. And if you don't, you're going to pay a lot more to a consultant to get that done for you. And so it's just planning and you and it might not be locked in, in, in stone. As you said, you've got external factors that could, my plan is um, franchising and suddenly something happens, you just have to sell it. But if you put those systems in place, those rhythms, those rituals, you are on the path to being able to sell something of value at whatever point for whatever reason. I love it. So it doesn't matter. I suppose many people in the audience are probably thinking right now, well, I've just started a business. Is now the right time? Like when is the right time for somebody to be speaking with you? Yeah. Well, it, it's really now. Like I know I speak to a lot of people who are thinking about starting a business and the first question we are, well, two questions. Why? What's the purpose? Why are you doing it? Two, what do you, what does success look like for you? And what does the exit look like for you? What do you, oh, I want to build a business that I can sell for, set me up for retirement. Cool. I want to sell a business because um, by that point, my children have gone, you know, left home and it's been a side hustle for me so that the sale price is not a big deal. It doesn't matter what it is, as I said uh, before, it's how you're going to run the business and what systems you need in place so that when you get to that point, you're ready. And you can make that decision whether you go that path or not. So now is the answer. Yeah, yeah. and I, I suppose really what you're investing in is the ultimate freedom, right, which is the choice for you to sell your business when you want to sell your business for what you want to sell it for and not the other way around. So Correct, exactly, yeah. yeah. So you've had such a rich, diverse life, uh, both personally and in business. Mm -hmm. One pearl of advice that you would give any woman in business that maybe was, you know, looking back on your business career, you think that's the one thing I wish someone had told me, you know, 20 years ago. What would it be? What would you say? Look, uh, I, I'm going to be greedy and say a couple of things, if I may. <laughs> I think a re I know a really important piece, and I had this at the beginning of my business career, was have a mentor, have somebody, and when I say mentor or, or coach, whichever way you want to term it, make sure that person will hold you accountable, check you and challenge you, but has the experience and credibility. Now, they may not be in the same industry as you, but we want somebody who's owned a business before. Because I know it saved me a few times along my business journey that somebody's come and says, oh, Joanne, what are you doing? Okay, let's walk this through. Let's see which pathway you're going. Let's correct and, and check this. I, I believe that is absolutely critical. And, and so, so therefore surrounding yourself with the right people uh, is, is so important. And head, heart and gut. My goodness. Head, does it make logical sense? Um, heart, is there passion there? And how does it feel right? Like women, we have fantastic intuition. Those things need to be in alignment. If they're not, guess what? We've got butterflies. We're not feeling so great. We probably get a bit hot and sweaty. We're, we're procrastinating. Oh, I'll go do this. Oh, I'll go do that. That's telling me this isn't an alignment. So take a break. Um, go for a walk on the beach. Take the day off. But take some time to reflect what's happening here. Why is this not in alignment so that you can correct and then ask your coach, mentor, that's what I'm feeling. And guess what? Often we all feel the same at some point in business. Um, but two, two gems I'm going to give you. I love it. So yeah. make sure, ladies, if you don't already have one, that you get yourself a mentor and make sure that you're checking in with the head, heart and gut. I absolutely love it. Well, Joe, thank you so much for spending time with us on the show today. Now, for those people that want to connect with you and learn more about what you do or are ready to, you know, get off the couch and make sure that they get yes. their exit plan in place, yes. how do they contact you? 
Look, the easiest way is to go to my website. You can see the spelling on the screen here, N-A-V-I-G-H-Biz. Now, there's a really cool thing on my website. It's got a button that says Call Joe, and it will. It will it will call me directly, but there's a little button there that you can book 15 minutes, you know, no cost, no obligation, but let's have a conversation. And if I can give you some gems to take away, that's my goal of any conversation that I have. And if I can help, brilliant. If I'm not, guess what? I've got a lovely circle of women that I can potentially direct you in the right path. Fantastic. Well, thank you once again, Joe, for all of your wisdom and for all of you ladies out there understanding that now is the time that you need an exit plan, that there is a big difference between a growth plan and an exit plan and to make sure that you get yourself a mentor and you always follow your head, your heart and your gut. And Thanks. with that, we will sign off on today's podcast where we'll be seeing you next time with another incredible lady that brings her version of success to you. Thank you. We want to thank you for joining the Successful Woman podcast today, the international initiative that empowers women to create the life and lifestyle that they truly desire. We would love for you to connect with us on our Instagram or Facebook page or join our group, We Are Successful Women. And remember, there are as many definitions of success as there are women on the planet. Thank you.